Hi guys and welcome to the first Bronte Book Club video of 2018. If you don't know about the Bronte Book Club you can go and watch my announcement video but basically I am working with the Bronte Society and the Bronte Parsonage Museum this year for Emily Bronte's bicentenary celebrations and I am the young ambassador and as part of that I am running a Bronte Book Club and for this month and next month we are reading Wuthering Heights so I really hope that you are enjoying that if you are reading it. There is still time to join in, there's also a good reads group which I'll leave the link to in the description and these videos are sponsored. So I am going to get into it and talk about Bronte non-fiction today because I'm sure there are lots of you who want to read more about the Brontes who maybe know little bits and pieces but want a much bigger picture and want to read some really interesting non-fiction. So I'm here with my top Bronte non-fiction recommendations. The first book I want to recommend to you is the one that I think is the Bronte Bible. You can't go wrong with this edition of the book. It is absolutely amazing and it is The Brontes by Juliette Barker who was actually the creator and librarian at the Bronte Parsonage Museum for six years so she knows what she's doing and this was actually 11 years worth of research. It is a huge chunk of a book and is absolutely amazing and looks at not just the Brontes lives but what was going on in house at the same time and really solidifies our knowledge of the Brontes by looking at the social and political history. I just think that this is the best one. I think that the research, the facts, the way that it is written is absolutely fantastic and I know that if I want to find out anything about the Brontes I just need to look in here and I will find out and I really do think this is the best version. It is the Bronte Bible. One of the most interesting and the first biography of Charlotte Bronte is The Life of Charlotte Bronte by Elizabeth Gaskell. Now this I think is one of the most interesting ones because Elizabeth Gaskell did personally know Charlotte but the way that she writes about people like Patrick Bronte, the Bronte his father, the way she talks about Charlotte's husband Arthur Bell Nichols and some of the facts in there we're not really sure how much of that is real and I think it's a really interesting book in its own right even if you take away the fact that it's written about the Brontes if you look at it just as a Victorian biography it's a really interesting form because the purpose of the Victorian biography and really the purpose of the life of Charlotte Bronte is to preserve Charlotte's morality to look at her in a way that is admirable and the way that that a young lady should be and so you get this very interesting perspective that Elizabeth Gaskell is writing from. For example some of the stuff in here that she writes about is twisted a little bit, she omits quite a lot such as Charlotte's relationship with Monsieur Ege but I think it's a great one no matter how much of it is true and how much of it is written in order to make people feel a certain thing. Another biography of Charlotte that I love is this recent one which is Charlotte Bronte A Life by Claire Harmon. I love this as a book and I think that it's one that you would be really good to start off with because it's not as heavy as The Brontes by Juliet Bark. It frames Charlotte's life and the lives of the other Brontes in an easy to understand way and whilst I don't agree with everything that Claire Harmon writes about and theorises on I think it's a great place to start if you want to begin with learning about the Brontes and really learn an overview of their lives from start to finish. A Bronte non-fiction book with a difference is The Bronte Cabinet Three Lives in Nine Objects by Deborah Lutz which takes objects that belong to the Brontes such as their juvenilia diary papers or fragments of stories they wrote when they were children or death made materials which were literally bracelets that were made out of the Bronte's hair which is a really popular thing in Victorian society and there are pictures in here too and it looks at those little objects that belong to the Bronte's and frames them in perspective to their lives. I do really like the pictures in here and how they capture the objects and the places in the parsonage such as this facsimile of the Bronte parsonage as it would have been when the Bronte's lived there because there's an extension on the site now and it was changed a little bit after the Brontes left and after Patrick died so I really like that and it's just a really lovely book to find out about the more intricate details of the Brontes lives rather than an overview and a massive overwhelming overview of their lives it looks at the tiny things and how that relates to them as a whole and then a recent Bronte book that's been released is Take Courage and Bronte and the Art of Life by Samantha Ellis who I really love I think she's a great writer and I love the perspective she puts on things because this this looks at the Brontes and each of the Brontes but mainly Anne and how 
you can take the lessons that they taught and things from their life and apply them to your own life and I really like that. I think it's different to a traditional biography. It looks at their lives but also looks at Samantha Ellis and how she interprets the Brontes and I like that more personal touch because very often you can read a biography like Elizabeth Gaskell's for example and think that is the ultimate truth and obviously each biography is slightly different because each biographer is putting their own spin on it and I think that takes courage really owns up to that in a way that I really like. I like that you read it and you're not really sure of your own perspective but you read it and you can develop your own thoughts on certain things. So I really do like this book and really would recommend this one. One book to read maybe after you've read more of the Bronte books and a few other biographies and maybe some of the films is The Bronte Myth by Lucasta Miller which takes well-known facts about the Brontes that maybe aren't true or misconceptions that we have about them and really lays down the facts and tells you the truth of the matter. There are also pictures included in here which looks at some of the actresses that have played the Brontes which I think is really interesting and how that has changed over time as well and I think if we look at biographies and how they are painted in biographies and popular culture and then how we look at them portrayed in films I think that we can really chart how our view of the Bronte as a whole is changing the Brontes as one amalgamation rather than individuals. For example, if you look at the most recent adaptation of their lives to walk invisible, Sally Wainwright talked about how casting was very important to her not to put these glossy models on the camera and instead show them as real people and I thought that was a really great thing to do with the adaptation because before in adaptations particularly if you go back quite a few number of years the actresses that are used conform to this idea of societal beauty and I do think that is changing and I think that is a great thing to change. I really love Lucasta Miller's straight up style of writing and how she tells it as it is and I think that it is a really good one to complement other biographies. Then we have The Infernal World of Brown well Bronte by Daphne du Maurier. I really love this biography because I love how it focuses on Branwell who we have very specific ideas of and I think that anything that tries to change those or tries to further explore them is a good thing. This is actually why I liked watching To Walk Invisible so much because I know that a lot of people complained about the focus on Branwell but I thought that was a really important thing to focus on and the effects that Branwell had on not just the Bronte's writing but on their lives and how much was changing at that time with Branwell and how much was changing in their lives because of it. And Branwell is a really interesting figure who I don't think will ever be able to compartmentalise but I also think that he deserves that attention and I think the Parsonage did a great job of that last year for Branwell's bicentenary. And then the two final ones which I'm not sure if you can get anymore but you might be able to find online are these two by Winifred Guerin who is probably my favourite Bronte biographer. I love the way she writes about them with so much passion and heart. So this is Emily Bronte and then I have Anne but I don't have a dust jacket because I got it second hand. I love these. I love the way that Winifred Guerin writes about them and I think that she is such an important Bronte scholar. I really like the distribution of the chapters in these and how they look at very specific points in the Bronte's lives and I do like how Emily has her own book and Anne has her own book because they're very often the Brontes that we don't really know a lot about but actually it's about taking that information and putting it in perspective and putting it in a way that actually we can extract a lot of information about them. And what I really like about this one is that it takes a lot from Ellen Nussey who was Charlotte's best friend and talks about her reaction to for example Emily and when they met and the things that they did together and I really like that about it. So those are some of the Bronte non-fiction books that I would recommend. I'd love to know if you've read any of these or if there are any you think I should read that I haven't included on my list. I'd also love to know in the comments how you're getting on with Wuthering Heights, whether it's it's a reread or you're reading it for the first time and how you're finding that and I will leave the link to the Goodreads group in the description also where we're going to be discussing Wuthering Heights further. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!